A couple weeks ago, I saw this Corday and Juice World music video that Cole Bennett shot. And the thing that really stood out for me from this music video was this really long hallway. And it got me thinking, how can I make my own hallway? And I was like, I can actually make this out of plastic. <laughs> So that's what I did. Came a long way from busting bulls down in my living room. Broke out the vatus, a two-seater, it ain't got no room. Come from the trap, I got them bowls wrapped up like a uh -huh. pool. In this video, I'm gonna take you through the process of not only building this hallway out of plastic, but how we shot this music video, how we edited this music video, and how we colored this music video in post. Let's get into it. I personally have never seen anybody do this, so I didn't really have a reference point on how I should make it but I came to the conclusion that I could just use PVC pipe. We've used PVC pipe in the past for music videos, like this really cool archway for this T. Crooks music video that we aligned with Neon Light Tubes. They're lightweight, you could transport them. They're very accessible to everybody. If you wanna make this build today, you can just go to Lowe's or whatever hardware store around you and pick up the items. And I thought that that would be really dope to kind of just spark this idea for you guys to be able to go do something creative. I figured we could align the outside of this hallway with painter's plastic. And I love it because it's lightweight, you can easily dispose of it, and it has this really nice frost to it. If you wanna double or triple layer this over top of your hallway, you won't be able to see outside of the hallway, but it gives you a really nice diffusion for any light that you want to add to actually light your scene, which is another really good plus to use a painter's plastic. If you're gonna make this build, you're gonna need 24 PVC pipes. You're gonna need 16 connectors for the edge of each one of these cubes. And you're also gonna need a box of painter's plastic. And I would recommend that you don't go anything below three fourths inch thickness for the PVC pipe. That's the one that I got. And my build wasn't shaky, but I feel like anything less thick than the pipes that I got would be kind of questionable. I realized that 10 feet on the PVC pipe that I purchased was just too tall when it was vertical. My ladder wasn't tall enough for me to be able to reach the top of the PVC pipe and add that connection piece at those edges. So another thing that I ended up getting was a PVC pipe cutter from Lowe's. It isn't expensive, but if you're gonna do this build, I highly recommend you get this because you can modify the tubes after the fact to adjust to whatever length you might need these pipes to be. So to summarize, you're gonna need 24 PVC pipes. You're gonna need 16 connector pieces for each edge of the cubes that you're gonna be making. You're also gonna need painter's plastic and a PVC pipe cutter. And the grand total for all of these things comes up to around $270. Now, a lot of people might think that this is expensive, but you can use these over and over again. I already have ideas in the future that I can use the PVC pipe cubes for, like aligning them with tubes, getting some really cool gimbal shots for performances for music videos. Just store them in your garage, you'll be able to use them again. I promise you the pricing for them makes sense. Finally ready to shoot. We took a lot of time to set up this PVC pipe hallway. Hopefully I did a really good job explaining this at my house. I'm not gonna explain it to y'all right now. I'm sure it'll be a really crispy voiceover for that, but I just wanna walk out through the light before we actually get into the shooting and talk a little bit more about the gear. So first off, lighting wise, we got this Nail Light Forza 500 B2 boomed above the PVC pipe. And we have uh, the Parabolic 120 softbox on top of that. The plastic is gonna do a bunch of diffusion on its own. But the reason why I wanted to go with this overhead setting was because I just didn't really feel like the side lighting or the Rembrandt lighting was really working for me. So this is a little bit more moody. We got uh, the paparazzi effect going on on here, the welding effect actually, so it's kind of flashing. And then we get that contrast between this backlight that's a little bit warmer and also the key light. And uh, the actual backlight we got back there is a Nan Light Forza 60B. And uh, that's pretty much it. The lighting's really simple, but for the camera setup that we're using, we're gonna be using the Canon R5C, and we got that pair with this TT Artisan 11 millimeter F2.8 lens. I just picked this up, it's cheap, it's $200. I can't wait to actually get in the set and start shooting with this, but it's gonna be linked down in the description if you guys are feeling how this footage comes out with this affordable budget lens. Let's hop into this shoot though, let's get it.
After I ran through a couple performances using the R5C and this TT Artisan lens on the Ronin, I wanted to kind of mix up the shot choices and the stabilizer choices. So I grabbed the Canon C70, I put on the Canon 50 millimeter F1.2, and I got some really cool tripod shots of Ace performing. Throughout pretty much all of these shots in this music video, we kind of cranked the shutter up because we wanted that jittery, intense feel for the music video. It's a fast song, there's a lot of fast movement, so I didn't really want it to be a lot of motion blur. And this is why you're getting this look that you're looking at. After I got the tripod shots, I went handheld also with the C70. I paired that with the Sigma 24mm f1.4 lens. And I got a couple different performances and I also got a couple different B-roll shots with a lower shutter. And this is just to drag the shot out, kind of give us some uh, really cool uh, light streaks and some uh, really cool transitional shots that we can use to kind of move us through the music video in a cool stylized way. After the hallway scene, we hopped into this scene of Ace kind of performing over top of the camera. Biting for this shot, we used the Nailite Pavo Tube 30X2s and I just used one of them. I placed it on the ground and I just faced it up. I knew that if he was gonna be looking over top of the camera, we were gonna need something to light his face. And then the light that we used for the background was just Nick off camera holding one of those Nail Light 60Cs. And he's just kind of waving that around at the ceiling just to give us a little bit more visual interest in the shot. We have the R5C and we also have it paired with that TT Artist and 11 millimeter lens. I love this lens, it's super wide and I love this perspective. It reminds me of like old school music videos that we used to see all the time with like artists really close up in the lens. We shot a couple takes static and then I realized that if I put the camera on the Ronin, I could just pair it with my phone and I could just kind of control it and spin it like through my phone. So. We did a setup like that. I used the feature on the Ronin where if you turn your mobile phone, it turns with it. And I look so hilarious controlling the Ronin for the shot. I'm like in the background dancing, like spinning around like Michael Jackson. It's freaking hilarious, but the shot turned out really dope. The next shot was just like a static shot of Ace. I know I wanted to get a static shot of Ace with like a fairly black background because in post, I was gonna get somebody to do like some digital analog glitches to the music video. That didn't work out, but we'll talk about in post what I did do to give us this really cool effect for the shot. These turned out really dope. I love the effects that I did in post. We'll touch on those once we get to the editing part of the music video. The last and final setup for the music video was very simple. I just wanted to kind of get like a side profile shot of him with like a white background. So we went up to this white psych and then we brought in that Nin Light Pavo tube just off camera just to give him a nice like edge light to him, kind of Rembrandt him a little bit, but we wanted this other side that was close to the camera to be like fully silhouetted. Shot that on the tripod using a 100 millimeter F2.8 macro lens on a C70 on a tripod. And that was pretty much the shoot. Before we get into the editing part of this behind the scenes, I wanna show you something that is freaking game changing. If you're anything like me, you take a ton of time finding songs for your videos. You gotta find the right tempo, you gotta find the right genre, you gotta find the right mood. But with Upbeat.io, it pretty much makes this process instantaneous. Upbeat is a royalty-free music and sound effects platform, and they just introduced the brand new AI playlist generator. Now this is powered by ChatGPT. You can type in different prompts into the AI playlist generator, describing your video or scene, describing your own personal personality or pretty much anything else and it'll generate an entire playlist of songs that are relevant to whatever prompt that you just typed in. It's actually awesome. All of the music in this video right here was generated using this AI playlist generator and it was like with the snap of a finger. platform is not only super convenient, but it's very affordable for pretty much any creator out there. They have a free plan, which allows you to get three downloads, and their premium plan is only $6.99 a month when billed monthly, but if you go annually, it's only $5.59 a month, which is incredibly affordable. Like, that's the price of a coffee that you're probably gonna buy tomorrow morning. So if you're looking for high quality music and sound effects for your videos, as well as this brand new AI playlist generator, which drastically reduces the time that it takes to find music for your videos, I highly recommend you guys check out Upbeat. It's gonna be a link down in the description for you guys to do so scroll down click that link get you a subscription right now you will not be disappointed i highly recommend it. i just want to showcase and show you guys some of the transitions that i used throughout this entire music video um, as well as some of the effects that i use especially the one that has the glitches and all that cool looking stuff to it so 
Uh, first things first, man, I just want to kind of go over the transitions and tell you guys where I got them from and how I was able to implement these to be uh, the transitional pieces for the music video. So if you just uh, just see what's happening right here, if I just click through, you can see it's giving us a nice flash and like it's kind of also dragging, um, dragging a little bit of those light rays from clip to clip. I'm actually using the ghosting effect from the In Music Video 2 pack, which is my collaboration with Motion VFX. Shameless plug, I actually do use this a ton and I've been using it like pretty much on every project since we created it together. There's going to be a link down in the description if you guys want to check it out. If you do copy, make sure to use my link because it will give me some kickback and you'll be able to support the channel that way. But you can see if I zoom in on the timeline, we have this ghosting effect and you could just drag this over top of whatever part of the music video or project that you're using and it'll give you a cool effect. And then for the transition here, this is from my own personal transitions pack that I created, which is the music video transitions for Final Cut Pro 10. I'm using Final Cut Pro 10 for the music video, I actually forgot to mention, but that's how I got these like kind of cool ghosting like transitions throughout the music video where it's like a flash, but uh, the the kind of like the light from the previous clip just kind of transfers over onto the next clip. And it just helps the, the clips kind of transition between each other a lot better. Let's talk about this effect right here. And these effects right here are actually from the uh, the Emory style pack from uh, Motion VFX. Shameless plug, I use motion VFX for a lot of different stuff. And uh, Restyle is cool because it has a couple different like glitch effects that you can drop over top of your footage uh, to give you a cool effect. And I basically just dropped the glitch eight over top of this. And if I turn it off, you can see, this is what the, the clip looked like, which is basically just straight out of camera. I also threw a diffusion on top of it from the M Music Video 2 pack. Um, so it's a bunch of different things you can do here. You can do lens distortion, which kind of just frays the edges a little bit. That diffusion on top is just to help bloom out this uh, these highlights right here on the top. If I turn that off, you can see what effect that's doing. Um, that's off, on, off, on, which looks cool. And then in here, it's, it's so many different things you can do with this glitch. So you can um, adjust the amount of glitches that you want. If you want more, you can do more. If you want less, you can do less. You can also adjust the waviness of the glitches. You can also adjust the colorization. If you want it to be like different colors, you can do that. That's basically that effect that I have. It's super simple. And you can just drag it over top of any part of the video that you want. Like if I wanted this part of the video to have that same effect on it, I can do that. It doesn't look as cool right there. I find that it looks really cool with this part right here because I filmed it with a plain black background and he pops off of that so well. So if you plan on using this in the future or picking this up, just keep in mind that you don't want to use it on a messy background because it's just not going to make sense. It just works perfectly with this clip because uh, we lit him well. He's separated off the background for the most part and we also hit him with that uh, kicker light back there and that also helped pop him off the background and make it like he's easily, like you can easily tell that that's him when you look at this clip, you know, so. All right, let's dive into this color grading. Now this shot was shot on the R5C in Candace Log 3. And this was like my hero frame. This is like the color that's based on the entire music video, which is like this wide shot with uh, the TT Artist and Lens. And uh, I just want to click through my layers, my color grading layers, and just kind of explain like my process of color grading. I won't go super in depth because it takes forever to color grade. And you know that if you color grade, it's a lot of tweaking. It's like, it's a lot of you adding too much saturation, remove saturation, blah, blah, blah. So I'm not going to do a lot. I'm just going to show you guys what's happening. So these are my layers. I color grade with color finale inside of um, Final Cut Pro 10. And uh, I added some sharpness to the overall scene around 50. Just, I, I want this to be like super crispy looking. So first things first, I dropped in a color wheels layer. And this is what I like to do. I like to get my black point and my white point to where they, where they will be in the music video. So this is like a slight contrast just to get my shadows where I want them to be, just to get my highlights where I want them to be. And um, it's basically just pulling down my lift up in my gain a little bit right here. You can see these adjustments. But I noticed that this light right here was uh, just popping a little bit too hard. So I wanted to pull like my purest whites back. So I dropped in another color wheels layer and I added the image mask onto it. And this image mask basically just pertains to the brightest, brightest, like the brightest, brightest parts of the image. You can see right there, it's pertaining to the light back there. And I just basically uh, pulled my gain down for that. So do before and after on that, you can see it's pulling that light back. I don't really want it to be super overexposed back there when it's flashing. Then is the overall contrast to the image. These are the points that I added into my contrast curve and I make sure I added it to Luma Preserving because I didn't really want the additional saturation that adding a curve typically gives to your footage. So I locked my midpoints to where they were. I found that the skin tones and everything in the middle was perfect. 
I just wanted to add it a, uh, add a bump to the shadows and uh, also to the highlights, but leave the skin tones where they were. I find that that looks really good right there. And um, next is the look. Now, if you just look at this shot as is, I filmed this on the warmer side because we have a contrast in the lights. The uh, actual key light is a little bit cooler than the, uh, the kicker light that we have coming through the back of uh, the hallway back here. And I filmed this on the warmer side because I know I wanted the skin tones to pop. And what I love about this look is that it's basically just me dropping in a log wheel and just adding teal to pretty much every single channel. My shadows, my mid-tones, my highlights, and also my offset. And I honestly like this as is. I think the fact that I filmed this on the warmer side just made this work. Like this could be totally fine for a gray, honestly. Um, but me personally, I don't really like white whites. Like white whites aren't really like they don't really speak to me. I love like warmer highlights. So what I did was I dropped in a, a color wheels layer and uh, on my highlights in my game, I basically just dragged that up to the yellow side. You know, I just wanted that to be a little bit warmer. And that just kind of offsets the image a little bit. We got some nice teal undertones in the t-shirt and all the black areas and also around these areas here, but we have these warm tones and that's just giving us a nice contrast um, in color. Next thing is the HSL curve and I have a couple different adjustments that I did here. First thing was I wanted to pull the saturation and the skin tone out a little bit, but I also wanted to keep the saturation in this light. I didn't really want to lose the saturation in this light by pulling the saturation out of his um, skin. So that's just this adjustment right here. You can say I boosted up this, the, the yellows, but I pulled out a little bit of the oranges for the skin. And then the hue versus luminance. This is just me pulling down the skin tones, make them a little bit darker and deeper. I find that if you make the skin tones deeper, they just look nicer. You know, that's before and after with that. You can see like brown skin just looks nice when you drop the luminance. And then uh, my saturation versus luminance adjustment is just me cleaning up the blacks in the shot. I didn't really want the blacks to be muddy. I wanted the black points of the image to be pure black. So this is me pulling out saturation for the purest blacks and the purest whites in the shot. We still have the overall warmness, but um, wherever it's white, white is gonna be white, white because of that adjustment. And then this like focus layer is the last one I added. This is uh, a log wheel. And you can see before and after for this is like drastic. I basically added in an eclipse, uh, eclipse mask and kind of feathered that out. And it's basically like almost a vignette. It just draws your eyes to the center of the frame. One thing that I really disliked about this shot when I was shooting, it was that I didn't have a grid. I don't know why my grid wasn't in my softbox bag, but I just didn't have a grid and light was just bouncing all over the place. So this focus layer, is basically just drawing your eye to the center of the frame. It's not super bright. It makes the shot dark. It makes the shot moody. And this really, really makes the color grade, honestly. Like if you, if I took off the look layer and I took off the color, just that in itself is making, of course, when I do this, it want to it wanna trip out because I'm doing a screen recording. If I take all of this off, you can see like this focus layer is just really adding a lot to the scene. You can't even see it because it's glitching out for some odd reason, but let me stop it for my computer for my computer crash. But yeah, this focus layer is cool. Um, from there, it's just me copying and pasting that to the close-ups and matching these scenes as well. These were kind of on the warmer side because my 50 millimeter just tends to lean towards the warmer side of colors. And um, color grading for the, uh, the shot of him um, standing over top of the lens is basically just a copy and paste from that uh, that hero frame. Not too many adjustments there, just up the um, overall exposure a little bit. And then for the black and white scene, we can go over that. This black and white scene right here, I like the lot. I like the contrast in it. So I could just go through the layers right here so you guys can see what's happening here. So this is what the shot looked like with nothing on it. You see it's just kind of dull, not really popping too hard. Dropped in a black and white layer, which is just me pulling out the saturation. Um, next layer is my black point. Just get my blacks and my whites where I want them to be. Dropping it, get basically getting in some cool contrast. And then uh, it's my curves layer. I locked the middle off. I just really wanted the middle where it was. And I just added that pop with this S curve on uh, the curve. And then the log wheel adjustments is just pulling the blacks in a little bit harder, not too much. And then on my color finale clip, um, my, my, on my color finale effect, I added uh, a good amount of grain to the shot as well, just to add that grunginess to it. But that's pretty much it. So that's the breakdown for this A1 Haven music video. It's going to be a link down in the description for you guys to check it out. Please check it out. Drop some feedback on it, drop my man some love. Greatly appreciate that. If you guys are looking for some additional education on how to 
go through the entire process of music videos. I just dropped this video a couple weeks ago, which was an entire music video breakdown as well. It has some really cool effects in it. If you haven't checked this out yet, check this one on next, all right? You will not be disappointed. Links to everything that I talked about will be down in the description. Drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, but with that being said, I'm out, y'all. Peace.